Like that pivot, much to my like amazement, it meant that I was able to work with so many more people um, at all over the world, lots of clients in the US and Canada. Um, and I just love it even more because I'm a massive introvert. So I can stay at home. I can work in my lovely studio with my plants. Um, and yeah, it's just like the dream, basically. <laughs> Hey there, and welcome to Sketchnote Chats. My name is Emily Mills, creator of Sketchnote Academy. Today I'm speaking with Katie Chapel, and she is a sketchnoter based in Barrack upon Tweed. And if you don't know where that is, like I didn't, and you had to Google it, let me save you the search. And it is the very tippy top of England, right by the border of Scotland. Anyway, Katie, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what do you do? What do you call yourself? So I am a live illustrator. That's what I call myself. Um, but I also know that people find me by searching graphic recorder or live scribe. Um, and basically I go to meetings and I draw pictures. Um, I specialize in online live illustration and I've worked for uh, Google, Facebook, Apple, um, all virtually because, like you just said, I live in the middle of nowhere in quite a rural part of Northeast England. Um, so yeah, I'm just very grateful for the internet um, and to have found this way of working because I love, A, I love hearing about random topics at these online events. And I also just love like visualizing what I'm hearing and learning um, and then giving the client something that they can reuse and enjoy. And yeah, I'm always impressed at their repurposing of my illustrations. Yeah, and I'm guessing you want to specialize in digital, especially with our climate of COVID and pandemic. Has that been a pivot or did you start out doing virtual live events? It's definitely been a pivot. So yeah, my, when this all kicked off in March 2020, I was just doing in-person events. And that week, I don't know if it was the same for you, I think it was like the 16th of March or something, <laughs> like traumatized. My inbox was just like, cancelled, cancelled, postponed, we're so sorry. And I was just like, what is going on? Like, I was supposed to be traveling to Amsterdam. I had all these events all over the UK. Um, and I think I went into like panic mode <laughs> and I was like, I'm never going to work again. But a few weeks later, I was like, I know these people are still having events. Like, there's no way that these big corporate giants have just shut down completely. Um, so I like gave myself a shake <laughs> and a talking to, and I was like, we're just going to tweak the wording on the website. We're going to make it very clear that we do online events. And we're also going to like figure out how it works because it was a total learning curve for me to like figure out the technology, figure out how I wanted it to display and figure out a way of communicating that really clearly to people. Um, but we got there and like that pivot, much to my like amazement, it meant that I was able to work with so many more people um, at all over the world, lots of clients in the US and Canada. Um, and I just love it even more because I'm a massive introvert. So I can stay at home. I can work in my lovely studio with my plants. Um, and yeah, it's just like the dream, basically. How did you find sketchnoting? Did you learn about it in college or studying or did you see it on social media? Yeah, so I was studying at Edinburgh College of Art and you've got to like pick something to get obsessed with, basically. And I was really obsessed with war artists and like people going to do reportage and like um, people went to the Calais jungle to draw like the um, people are staying there and like somehow that evolved into me discovering graphic recording because I was like I really like the war artist thing but I don't want to go to a war zone <laughs> and like draw on the spot but I love that magic of like the immediate drawing and like visualizing stuff that was happening um, and then it was when I was at Edinburgh Uni there was um, a call out internally for students and they were like we're having a sustainability meeting and we want somebody to visually record the notes of what we're talking about and I was like oh my goodness this is just like being a war artist but in a meeting um, and so I like volunteered myself for that because I was like I don't even know if I'm good at it or if I can do it or if it's too scary because you know we're working live or people are watching you it is quite scary um, and I just absolutely loved it so yeah, actually, that was it was a good trip down memory lane because you asked me to prepare some stuff before this chat, and it was my old that's my oldest piece of graphic recording work. So I've got that with me today to show you. Perfect. So here it is, um, and this was on massive pieces of paper, and I was using crayons, and like 
like now as a sort of semi-seasoned live illustrator I'm, I'm still proud of myself like for a first attempt like chucking myself in at the deep end I'm like you know what Kay good job well done me <laughs> um <laughs> but like there's obviously things I would change now but it was just so much fun to like slap stuff on the paper and like go from table to table and listen to what people were talking about and it was about sustainability and eco-friendliness which is still something that I really love to like focus on in my work. Yeah that's a topic that probably won't get old for quite some time. Hopefully ever. <laughs> I think it's really important. Can you show us some of your most recent work? So this was what this is like the last big project I did before the Christmas break. This was for Money Supermarket. Um, they're like a comparison website in the UK and they were at a big, um, what's it called, like an internal event celebrating all their achievements for 2021. Um, and they had like a huge award ceremony. So I had to draw so many people, <laughs> like all these teams and make like awards for them. And it was just, you know what it's like when it's a lovely team to work with. They were really friendly they really appreciated the illustrations um, and I got to go to the event virtually online, thankfully on Teams and sort of see people's reactions and stuff. And that, that always makes me really pleased. Can you tell me a little bit about your process and how you've evolved over the years? I noticed your first one was color on white and your latest one is white on black. And I know for me personally, transitioning to dark backgrounds was really hard. So how did you learn along the way? Yeah, so... This is one of those questions like I don't feel like I have a process but I definitely do because there's <laughs> there's things like um so the reason that recent work is on a black background is just because of the client's branding and what the award ceremony looked like so I was like I'm just gonna I always make my work to kind of fit nicely with their marketing and their branding and um, so that's why it was like that um so I suppose my process is looking at the flow of the event so that I can kind of mentally map out where things are going to go, how much space and time I'm going to allot to each chunk of paper, like paper, it's on my iPad, so it's digital paper. Um, and then I'll, sometimes I draw a thumbnail, but it's literally like a square with a squiggle in it and I label what it is. It's never actually a visual plan. Um, and then looking at the branding I'll make sure I've got the palette loaded up so I'll like eye drop a tool the colors have them ready um and I'll write the title before the event begins and I always give myself a little pat on the back I feel so organized writing the title <laughs> because sometimes if you forget and then you log in and you're like oh I'm writing the title of the event and they're starting and it's gonna like leave me behind um, yeah the yeah, title so can be such a great first impression for people i like to do my titles ahead of time too because it's like look how amazing i am and i haven't even started <laughs> yes yeah it's, it's like a sort of like a taster isn't it and people are like oh my goodness yeah especially people who have never seen graphic recording they're like what is happening what is this and then they see the drawings start to happen and then their minds are just blown so <clears throat> what's the experience like for an attendee i've event I've attended a couple events where I've sketch noted, but I wasn't on screen ever. It was just like a afterwards token to give to attendees. And I've been to events where there's a graphic recorder who's being projected live during the talk. What's your experience with different kinds of virtual events? How do event planners introduce you? Are you live on screen? Are you secret? Yeah, it totally depends on the person I'm working with. Like sometimes, for instance, when I was working for Apple, they were so sensitive about me. There were like loads of rules that I couldn't break and like things I couldn't depict. So that was top secret. And I had to send it to some important person to be okayed before they were allowed to circulate it. So that's like one extreme. And on the other extreme, some clients are like, we're going to spotlight you the whole way through and you're the only thing spotlighted. And it's like the main attraction. And that like, to be honest, that freaks me out a little bit and I have to forget that that's happening. <laughs> um, but I think like the nice happy medium that is most experiences is when I just look like another panelist and I'm like a little box and people can see that something exciting is happening. And then there might be a grand reveal at the end where I share my screen and everyone's like, wow, amazing. I feel like a lot of artists are introverts or they don't want the spotlight. They might be super proud of their work, but they don't want to be on the platform while it's happening. Sounds like you're probably in the same boat where it's like, I like showing off my work but I don't want to be the spotlight of the work if that makes sense absolutely and when people say oh could you just like talk us through your drawing I'm like no 
<laughs> so bad because firstly I'm just really awkward and I'm gonna be like so I drew this picture and this was what you were talking about I just oh it's awful and then there's like an awkward end and they're like well thanks for that Katie anyway moving I was like oh god <laughs> it's so much easier if they just like let me share my screen and they talk and say like well that's really great thank you so much blah blah, blah. and we'll send this to you afterwards like yeah, that's that's a nice ending I always think rather than like yeah throwing me onto the stage reluctantly I'm sure you have a lot of experience working all kinds of different virtual events and live events do you have any tips or advice that you swear by that you will always remember or always share with people um always do a tech run even if you've used zoom and your software and everything a million bajillion times always do a tech run because sometimes there's like firewalls or security with different companies and you need to like talk to the IT guy and get let into something um always arrive early earlier than you think you need to and then you can like connect go make a cup of tea have a lie down and come back that's always really nice like there's nothing worse than rushing in joining like two minutes before it starts because the person's worried that you're working for you're worried that you start the illustration out of breath and like panicking so yeah just give yourself loads of time yeah Best nothing tips. like starting work off with anxiety oh god yeah it's, it's like it's scary enough anyway your adrenaline's going to be high anyway so anything you can do to like calm yourself down beforehand like being half an hour early is going to stand you in good stead for like doing a lovely drawing that everybody gets loads of value out of. What kind of things inspire you? Where do you get your inspiration, not just for graphic recording, but for all of the art that you create? Um, it's a tricky one. So I, I do love like observational drawing, drawing from life. I always think that's, that's where it all started really. And like, that was my obsession with reportage and like war artists and stuff. Um, and I run the Good Ship illustration with my two friends, Helen and Tanya, um, and Helen's really into observational drawing. So I think she encouraged me a lot in the early days, like do lots of observational drawing and she's got a hashtag walk to see and stuff. Um, so like, and like that Instagram is really inspiring. I think it's, it can be like a balance, like sometimes Instagram's really overwhelming and stressful. And sometimes it's like a treasure trove of incredible people and incredible drawings. It just makes you want to go out and draw yourself. Um, but it is good to be like really wary of how you feel when you're using Instagram. Yeah, for sure. Some days I feel like inspired by everybody and then other days I'm inspired by everybody and then I'm like jealous, like, dang it, I need to get off Instagram before I start being what angry. What am I doing with my life? Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing I appreciate, appreciate about you and your videos and your posts is that you're upfront about struggles, like I'm awkward or... I don't know how to approach this. I've never done it before, or I have to give myself a talking to. And so I appreciate that you talk about those struggles because we all have them. We're just pretending that we don't. So thanks for speaking to those and then walking people through how to overcome it. What other kinds of things do you think are your strengths? Um, I do like to see like a positive, like a silver lining and everything. And I think that really helped with the early stages of the pandemic when I was like, oh my work's being cancelled but then I was able to finally twist it around and be like no but actually like there is we can survive this there's other things we can do um and yeah I think just like being honest about the struggles and the real the real life side of things is so important because illustrators and creators especially I think we're so hard on ourselves. and if we see other people doing well we're like oh well they're perfect and like they mustn't ever feel like they're a bad artist or like they mustn't ever do a bad drawing or like totally fail at an event. And like, actually that's it. Like um, recently I had an event where I showed up an hour late because I got the time zone wrong and they were like wrapping up and it was awful. <laughs> it was so bad. And it was a big client that I'd worked for a lot of times. It's Johnson and Johnson actually, it'll just be out there. So it yeah. wasn't like a small business where I could be like, oh, sorry guys. It was like a big deal. But they're working with me again. So it wasn't the end of the world and nobody died. I just felt really bad for about a week. So Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I would too. Because yeah. I just in time zones, they're the worst. Absolutely. Especially with time changes, like around seasons, that's yeah. really difficult. And then like my parents live in Arizona and they don't do time change there. And so there's some parts of the year where they're two hours behind and other parts of the year where they're one hour behind. And it's just so confusing to keep up with. And it's like, how are, how are we doing this virtual work? 
someone needs to invent a website that has like all the time zones at once. You can make sure, I'm sure it already exists. Yes. I just don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably it's bound to exist. But yeah, I've just had um, a thing set up, like a, a client relationship manager, CRM. Um, and one of my main things was like, can people just book onto my calendar so that I know exactly when the event is and I'm definitely not going to miss it because I was so freaked out about being an hour late to that event. It was like emotionally scarring. <laughs> I think that will yeah. never happen again. <laughs> but it's also great because one, they hired you again. So it wasn't the end of the world for them. And two, you learn to just deal with your own disappointment and failure. It's like, I am not I'm not a bad person. I just make mistakes because I'm human and I have to move on. <laughs> yeah, I think that's half the battle. Like even with just drawing and stuff, like if you're making work and you're not happy with it, you're a human, you've got to make bad work. Um, and then the good shit for us saying like you could do bad drawings and just keep going because every bad drawing gets you closer to a good one. So it's, yeah. it is painful at times though. So tell me more about um, where can people find you online? You've mentioned Good Ship. Tell us more about that and then where else people can find you online. Yeah, so the, the Good Ship is the um, company I run with my friends, Helen Stevens and Tanya Willis. So we are the Good Ship Illustration um, on Instagram and we're on other things. But Instagram, that's definitely the name, the Good Ship Illustration. And I'm on the internet as Katie Draws in most, most platforms um so yeah you can tag me on instagram and say hello It'd be lovely to see you katie what do you have coming up in 2022 what are you excited about doing this year so this year is all about kind of streamlining my business and automating as much as possible um because i'm having a baby in june so that's the main thing which is it's exciting but it's also terrifying so like I'm, oh yeah, congratulations kind of like, thank you yeah my whole my whole mission is to like baby proof my business before june um, and it's been a little bit quieter this this January so far. I mean, we're running the 18th of January, but I'm so grateful for that because it's given me space to like calm down and prepare everything um, oh, good. wise. Yeah. Katie, thanks so much for joining me today for Sketchnote Chats. Um, I appreciate your time and hopefully we'll see you around on the internet. Yay, bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks. Want to connect with other sketchnoters? Join the free community. You can join our monthly virtual hangouts, show your work and get feedback, and get the latest news in sketchnoting. Join below for free.